today I'm gonna do a little tutorial on um, using washi tape to make patterns that you can then use with your illustrations. And I went ahead and I aligned my washi tape. I have two different types. Um, I align my washi tape so it'll be a repeating pattern. And you can find out more about how to do this on my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. And I also went ahead and I rendered two images to the point where I'm ready to start, um, start applying the colors, matching the colors, cutting things out. And I also swatched my colors so I know what I'm working with. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is on this image, I am going to use this repeating floral background right here. And I got my washi tape, this particular kind with this sort of um, ditzy pattern. I got that from um, Michael's and it's actually really cute. So I might end up getting more. And when I do this sort of work, I, um, I render the image underneath, uh, like the, the parts, even if I'm gonna get, even if I'm going to cut them out, I apply like a shadow or a base color. Um, and that's gonna help me blend the two together because I'm not going to cut perfectly um, against the line art. I am going to um, sort of cut around it and then uh, chain, like um, draw in the illustration around it. But you guys will see that in a minute. So I'm adding some shading because the main color of that particular design is white with a pattern on top of it. And I'm going to wait until I've placed my washi tape to try and match my pattern. And I'm just blending the white out, or rather the, the, whoa, the B triple zero out, um, just to sort of soften the transition between the colors. And I plan on leaving the lace, which is this part here, the scallop bit. I plan on leaving that white. I might draw some beads in on it later, but for now it's gonna be white. Okay, so now this is done, ready to go. Next thing I'm going to do is cut the paper I don't need out. So I have some chipboard. This is just the back of a watercolor pad. You want this sort of chipboard. Um, don't cut directly on your craft mat unless you have a cutting mat. Um, and a sharp X-Acto blade. So the first thing you wanna do is use a sharp X-Acto blade to go ahead and trim away the area that you're going to want to replace with your pattern paper. And I have a tutorial on my blog about using um, like washi paper or chiogami paper, basically origami pattern paper for this sort of stuff. But I thought washi tape might be something that most most crafters for sure have that in their, in their arsenal. And I'm having a little bit harder of time than you might because I'm cutting through fairly thick watercolor paper. And I'm just sort of cutting through the back to sort of free up the area so it doesn't tear the paper. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting out the rest of the area I'm not going to need. All right, so I've gone ahead and trimmed out all the area I won't be using. And I've also got my washi tape laid out so you guys can kind of see how this is gonna look. And something that's helpful to do is to go ahead and trim your paper down a little bit so it's a little bit more manageable. And then what I like to do is I like to line it up using a light source so I'm making the best use of my paper, tape it down, and then holding my image up to the light again, trace it with a pencil so I can cut it out from the reverse side. This way I never have to make a mark on the side that has the design on it so there's no straight pencil marks to worry about. You can 
see, well, it's hard for you guys to see given the angle of the light, but see where it's coming through over here? I'm just going to roughly trace around the whole area. So it looks like this when it's done. Gently remove it from your paper. And then begin cutting. And I didn't do a perfect trace. I left myself a generous border so I have something to affix to the paper. If you cut it too exact, or if you tr uh, trace your image too exact, you're not gonna have anything to tape down. I may have messed up right there. I cut a little shallow. Hopefully, hopefully it's still covered by my seam allowance. So there's our washi tape pattern paper. Now that all bleh, now all that's left is to attach it. And there's several ways you can do that. You can use, if you want to, you can use um, glue. I find that glue makes my paper buckle sometimes. So I prefer to stay away from glue and um, honestly use tape. You can use masking tape. You can use archival tape if you so choose. Um, you could even use those little adhesive dots or like the mono tape. Um, but I'm gonna just use some masking tape. So now we have our washi tape in place and it already looks pretty cute, but we can we can make this even cuter by continuing the pattern onto, and you wanna make sure you're dealing with a clean marker by continuing your pattern onto your original paper. And this takes a little bit of patience and a careful eye. A popular phrase for crafty how-to is you don't have to be an artist and I would never say anything that ridiculous because I think you guys are all artists um, but you don't have to have a lot of technical skill to do this just some patience because all you're really doing is extending the pattern We're done with the blue, time for the yellow. So you're pretty much just extrapolating what you know is there, and that's not super hard, and it doesn't take a whole lot of creativity to do it either. But the result looks so much better than if you leave it plain. And it can be fun too. It can be a good sort of little mind exercise, I guess, if you wanna think of it that way. So that is what the finished piece looks like. And you can still tell by like the shadow and the lighting that it is, there is a sort of two dimensional aspect to it. But I think, um, I think extending the design to the, um, to the watercolor paper helps sort of camouflage it. And you're probably wondering, well, why not just draw the design on the paper to begin with? Um, well, I do that too, um, and I recommend it. I think it's a lot of fun. I enjoy um, surface design, um, but I do recognize that um, many of you may not yet feel entirely confident in your ability to, to execute a design. Um, and I wanna be sensitive to that. This next one is going to be a bit harder because instead of having one tape, I have two, and one of the tapes is, um, if I were laying down color, I would just lay down a wash of blue for that. And I'm coloring the dress she's wearing underneath the pinaform, which is what I'm going to apply 
the um, washi tape design to. I'm coloring that first. And we're gonna run into an interesting problem in a minute. Well, it's not really a problem, because there's an easy solution. Um, and I wonder if some of you have figured out what it is yet. Um, if you have, don't spoil it for anybody else. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to solve it. And as almost always on this channel, I work with my own imagery. Um, the only time I won't be working with my own imagery is if I have a sponsorship deal that requests that I work with someone else's or if I do a collaboration with another artist. However, you can work with whatever um, imagery you want to use that you have the rights to use. So if you want to use this technique with a stamped image or a digi stamp, it should work just fine. And I'm working with Copic sketch markers and I'm working with two special markers. Um, they are Copic sketch markers that I filled with Ranger inks because I wanted to put my inks to good use. And if you're interested in that, I have a tutorial on this channel that covers how to do that as well. And I'm doing these illustrations on um, cold press watercolor paper. It's um, a heavier stock. It's actually Canton XL, which isn't always fun to paint on for me, but it does take marker fairly well, although it's a little bit thirsty, so um, it can definitely drain your markers if you're not careful. So that is something to consider if you're interested in creating a similar effect. So, as with the other design, I am going ahead and applying shade to the base layer of the dress. And since the predominant color on the design I'm gonna use is white, that's what I'm applying. And I'm gonna use the colorless blender to blend it out a little bit. And then, same as last time, I'm going to cut it out. So I'll do that and I'll check in with you guys. So we are actually at the unique problem. And the unique problem is this pocket here, it's not attached to any align work. It's, a, it's basically an island. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it out and set it to the side and then I'm going to attach it on top of the washi tape that I'm gonna put in as an insert. It's a pretty simple problem. Um, but for those of you who might be working with this technique on more complicated line art, this is a good solution to have. And if you have um, any of those like adhesive dots that a lot of crafters enjoy using, now would be a perfect time to use them. I'll probably end up using tape because that's what I have. But um, those adhesive dots would be great. Okay, so do you remember how we attached the paper, how we traced and figured that out? We're going to be doing that again with this one. And this is kind of what it'll look like when it's assembled. And this is great if you happen to really like a crazy quilt aesthetic. That's, I mean, that's sort of how I am. Uh, for Kara's stuff, because she's my seven inch tall little girl character, um, I really like emphasizing how tiny she is when I do promo stuff like this. So big patterns, busy patterns, things that make people think about quilting or like prairie living, those are all um, aesthetic things I enjoy using for Kara. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, trace my background and cut it out. And I'll see you guys in a minute. And just like last time, I'm going to use, um, and this is a little more important when you're doing an edge lineup like this, um, making sure you've got everything in place. I'm going to use some masking tape to affix it to the back. Now this isn't really an archival solution. So if you want, if you're doing um, this 
from a fine art sort of perspective, you're going to want to use something archival. Um, I am doing this for personal use and it'll get scanned and added to my collection of images for book two of Seven Inch Kara. But I don't really intend for anyone else to um, be messing around with it or holding it, handling it. However, so if you're, if you're making this for someone, I recommend you, um, you affix something to the back of the card. And I'll actually be doing that for my own, um, for these. And when you have like a floating piece like that, you definitely want to tape or glue that down because it can get caught on things and that will tear and that will look will be sad, it will look sad, and it'll be sad. Okay, so now we've got this floating pocket to handle, and um, that would be the perfect time for you to pull out those glue dots if you got them. Um, I used to have some Elmer's glue on my tabletop. I don't currently. I could probably use some glossy accents. I hear everybody says that they do that. I don't really want to, so I'm gonna be, maybe, a cheaty person and fold over some tape. And then I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it to where it was. And then I want to make the two images look like they belong together. There's a few ways you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and block in the blue and I'm gonna use a white Signo pen to add the white design afterwards because it's much easier. See, when you're making when you're making art, when you're being crafty and creative, you have to think smart. You can't just uh, forge ahead. I mean, sometimes you can forge ahead. Sometimes forging ahead is great because like if inspiration strikes, you should ride with it. But um, if you just spend a couple of minutes thinking about the best way to approach a solution, you'll end up happier in the long run. I think it it's been said that like 90% of making art is the mental prep. And as a comic artist and an illustrator, I can definitely vouch for that. Um, when I was in grad school at SCAD, I used to have dreams about doing perspective grids. And uh, my brain would do my homework for me. In my sleep, I would wake up with the solution. And even now I enjoy going to sleep with a comics problem that I want to solve, like how am I going to stage this shot? I like going to sleep with that floating around in the top of my brain so that I can hopefully dream a solution. Okay, so I've very carefully drawn in that blue. Now it's time to use the same blue and um, finish drawing in that flower design. And this does take a little bit of steadiness. It does take a little bit of, um, you know, being able to recognize the design and replicating it, but it doesn't take too many fine motor skills. If you guys can center stamps, I couldn't, I surely couldn't. Some of you guys are just so, <laughs> so skilled at that. I'm so impressed. Um, if you guys can do that, if you guys can draw a straight line or a circle even, you should be able to replicate a design. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good enough. That's another thing I've noticed from people is they they allow the fact that they're never gonna do it perfect to get in the way of doing anything at all. And you know what, even an imperfect something is better than the wish for something perfect that can never be. So you gotta put that time in. Art, creation, making things, that's all about sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice for these skill sets? Most of the time, it's just time. For those of you who, who are maybe busy parents and you, you don't have time, or you think you don't have time to draw, well, I mean, you could be sketching your kids at like their soccer game, for example. You could be drawing the trees. You could be drawing your environment. That's all valid ways. Um, I have friends who work in um, like food service and when they have any spare time, they're doodling on the backs of receipts. 
um, they're making it a priority to get that practice in because you're not going to get good unless you make a sacrifice. You have to want it. And I mean, it's so e it's so easy to talk yourself out of it. It's so easy to say, well, I'm never going to do anything with it or who even cares. But if it makes you happy, if you think you would enjoy it at some point, then it's probably worth the sacrifice. And at the very least, it'll give you an appreciation and an understanding of what illustrators and artists do. Just checking for any blue areas that I might not have sketched in. I think I've got everything. And I'm filling in those reds. At the very least though, I want you guys to know that I sincerely believe in you. Like I wouldn't spend the time making these sort of videos, trying to show you guys skills that I, I went to school for if I didn't sincerely believe that anybody can learn this if they're willing to put the time in it. I want to demystify art. I want to demystify um, illustration. I want to make it accessible to you guys. So I am, while I'm nattering on, I'm actually looking for my white Signal and I see it. So I'll be right back. And a Signal is just my favorite brand of white gel pen. I get mine off of Amazon. I gotta say I love that two day shipping. And I've got Prime, so I can get a bunch of them. And I'm going to use this white gel pen to replicate the white flowers on the blue stripe portion of Kara's dress. And um, if you're watching, of course you're watching this, that's how you're hearing me. But if there's ever anything you would like me to go over in detail or explain, or if you'd like to just see me draw, like, you know, hey Becca, how do you draw a dog? Just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to get on it. I want to make stuff that you guys enjoy. So, and I'm not a mind reader. So I need to hear from you what you want to see. But I would be very happy to accommodate, especially drawing tutorial requests, especially if you have specifics. Okay, so. That is the pattern on her dress. I think it turned out pretty cute, but we're not quite done yet. I want to do a little dot pattern on her pockets if my Signa will survive. And it's not a complicated dot pattern. And I want to do I think a little, mm, maybe not. Maybe I just want to do dots on her dress. I almost said a tulip pattern. It would look really cute, but it would take a lot of time. And I can show you guys that sort of thing in another video. I don't need to make this one last an hour. So I think I will do a very simple heart pattern and that is just so easy with the brush tip because it's just two very tiny little strokes. And the results are just so cute and it's so easy to do. There's no reason not to give it a try at home. You can do big hearts, you can do little hearts. Okay, so we're all done. Actually, I would like to add um, little, little beads as buttons. It's easy to do. We start with circles. Then we add a circle of shadow over here. You gotta stay consistent though. That's one of the keys. When you're adding shadows, you gotta make sure they're consistent so that they look like shadows. And then we're gonna do a highlight with the signal over there. And then 
Let's do a highlight in her eyes. Oh, a highlight on her lip. Okay, so I think we are done now. I would like to thank you guys for watching my tutorial. Um, it's a pretty basic technique. There's some ways to spice it up a little bit, make it look more um, cohesive. I hope you guys play around with it and let me know your results. And if there's ever anything you'd like me to demonstrate how to draw for you guys, please let me know. I would love to do that. Um, I love art, I love drawing, I love illustrating, and I wanna make it accessible for you guys. Um, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you leave a like. Consider subscribing to my channel for more like this, um, as well as art supply reviews and uh, watercolor tutorials as, as well, I believe. Um, I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you have, guys have a great day. Um, and if you enjoy content like this, I recommend you check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. There's seven years of this sort of content. And there's also a write-up of this post if you had trouble following along with me in the video. And um, if you want to help fund content like this, because it does get a little expensive, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. And uh, one last little plug. If you think this character is cute and you would like to learn more about her, please check out my comic, Seven Inch Kara, and you can find that on Amazon, um, or you can find it on my website and get it direct from me. That means I get all that monies. I mean, uh, you get a really cute little wooden charm and a copy of Kara from me. Um, and you can find that at natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic. So I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.